here to make more sense. So yeah. I think maybe without further ado, let's call the meeting. Uh, to start, welcome to the Monday, February 5th, 2024 Development Review Board for the City of Montpelier. Um, I, uh, Meredith will go over staff remote procedures. That uh, yeah, do you want, we don't have it in here. Do you want me to do that or do you want to introduce members first? Um, either way. Uh, starting over on the right. Board member. Rob Goodwin, Vice Chair. Meredith Crandall, Staff. Sharon Allen, Chair. Captain Burgess, Board Member. Great. And we have two on remotely. So, Joe, Brian, if you want to take turns introducing yourself. Uh, Joe Kiernan, Board Member. Brian? You got to unmute yourself, Brian. Oh, there we are. Brian Jones, board member. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so staff review of remote meeting procedures. Okay, so I think everybody has seen this so far. All righty, so for uh, anyone who is viewing tonight's Development Review Board meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in tonight's discussion via the Zoom platform um, using either video or telephone access options. Um, if you want to have the full video experience, you can type this into your link here into your web browser, um, and I will get a notification that you want to get into tonight's meeting. Your other option is to call into this telephone number, and when prompted, type in this meeting ID. And again, I'll get a prompt and let you into the meeting. If anyone is trying to access and is having problems, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. Um, for those attending via Zoom, turning your video on is optional. Uh, we do ask that you please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will reduce background noise. Um, and a reminder that the Zoom chat function should be used only for troubleshooting or logistics questions. Um, the only people we have on right now remotely are Orca and DRB members. So I'm not going to do the whole lengthy spiel. Um, just a reminder that in the event the public is unable to access tonight's meeting and I would get notification of that via email, then it will need to be continued to a time and place certain. I'll now hand the meeting back over to the chair. Thank you. Um, has everybody had a chance to review the agenda? Make a motion to accept the agenda as printed. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, so we just have one uh, application in front of us this evening um, about a installation of a new eight foot tall fence. Um, anybody, uh, you're going to be testifying, Justin, and anybody else who's also interested in testifying, um, if you could raise your right hand now. You solemnly swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, under the pains and penalty of perjury. Great. Um, in the interest of uh, full disclosure, I just wanted to mention that I live in the same neighborhood. It's not the uh, not adjacent to, but it's it's within uh, the purview of this. Do you feel any? Con do you feel that you have any conflict? I do not. Does anyone else have any concerns? Okay, thank you. Just be careful. Um, do you want to just uh, jump in with it? I mean, I, I think your staff report was very clear. Yep. Uh, and Lots. and there's a lot of good information. What I was thinking, maybe Justin, is that you could just describe the project briefly. Sure. And then we could uh, kind of go through what the staff report said and what's going on there. Sure. We have an existing um, 10 foot fence. It's an eight foot panel plus a two foot lattice. On. I'm oh, sorry. No, I'm just. Can can everybody hear Justin? I just want to make sure if you I'll need get to closer. get closer to the microphone. Cool. So we have an existing 10-foot fence, about 70 feet in one direction, about 10 feet in another direction. Um, I think it's eight panels or 10 panels. That it's a privacy fence. It's the only reason it exists. It abuts um, Jerry and Susan's yard. Uh, they're not always about Jerry and Susan's yard because they weren't always living there. Um, it is currently eight foot panels, like I said, with a two-foot lattice above. So, And then it's off the ground by about a foot. Uh, to prevent um, rotting on the bottom of the fence because it, it, it's essentially right next to a small little creek, a, more like stream. More, stream is a, is probably a better word for it, and um, it's in disrepair, as you can see in the uh, in the pictures. It's in really bad shape. It needs to be replaced. 
I would like to replace it with something of similar size. We can't replace it with something that tall because they don't make eight foot panels anymore. They just make six foot six foot panels. Um, but we want to have um, have six foot panels that are off the ground. I'm sorry, they don't make 10 foot panels. They make eight foot panels, but they won't make 10 foot panels for us anymore. But we need it to be off the ground a certain distance like it is currently because we don't want it to just rot out. Uh, the only thing that's interesting about this project, um, aside from the fact that this fence has existed forever and nobody's ever cared, is that it does slope downward. And so you can see that it is a pretty severe slope downward. Probably, it's probably, what do you think, seven foot drop over the length of the fence. And... Um, and yeah, and you can see over the fence, essentially, if you're sitting in our driveway and you're looking at the small, the lowest part of the fence, if it was significantly lower, you could see right into Jerry and Susan's living room. I actually just noticed tonight that there is a section of the fence missing and I could stare directly into their, what I think is their living room. Um, I'm just never outside at this time of night, so I didn't notice until now. But um, but yeah, I mean, it's really, it's nothing except a privacy fence and work, yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about what you, are you just replacing it in the exact same way with the shorter panels or? Yeah, it's just going to be, it'll be shadow boxing. So, um, shadow, like shadow, I think it's called shadow box paneling. So if you, um, so that's what shadow box looks like if you look up on the screen. Yeah. So instead of the panels, it's just for wind purposes. So the wind can cut through it a little bit easier. Okay. And so it'll just last a little bit longer. It's that really aesthetically, I actually don't particularly like it, but it's, um, but it's much better for the, our weather. It also has uh, that design has the effect of uh, softening the impact of the uh, of 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 the wall like effect that the stockade. Yeah, yeah. I had passed. Yeah, and I mean, really, we have kids. It's not like we don't. I just want to be clear. And Jerry obviously knows this. We like all of our neighbors. We just have kids. They have grandkids. Right. And like, I mean, it literally, it's just for privacy. Yeah. yeah so. Um, next, two board members have questions right off the bat, or should we start the review of the appropriate steps to be taken tonight? Um, anybody want to say anything now? Okay. All right. So, uh, looking at the standards, um, it seemed like, uh, in general standards and special use standards, um, that the staff found, and I agreed as I reviewed it, that the current use complies with 3001. Um, the section where there is some question about uh, about the variance is section B on 301, 3101E, and it generally limits fences and side yards to six feet in height, except for three potential exceptions by the board, where a higher fence is approved by the Department of Development Review Board are required under these regulations for buffer screening or security purposes. And I think that that's the part that we talked about uh, in the project on Vine Street, um, where everybody's very happy to have that buffer fence be a little bit taller and so that uh, so that the um, privacy factor actually worked there. So that sounds like a very similar issue to me. I think, I think what's key to know here is that this is not a front yard fence we've dealt in the past and that's sort of like a different criteria as far as the regs go but you know side yard your rear yard uh the board has a bit more leeway as to uh our discretion right uh we're talking about the interface between two property owners versus the a property owner and you know the public right away uh, I think much that's different uh different situation i can also say to the board Literally nobody will ever see this fence except for the people that are right. physically on our property <laughs> yeah. in our driveway. Yeah. I would mention that you can't even see it. Doesn't have any yeah. has no impact on the public right away. Yeah. Okay, so that was so that was a sort of only vaguely sticky wicket here. Um it's not applicable. Uh Like I said, I, I I also agree that this felt very similar to Vine Street, and that the um that that it's a buffer screening purpose, and that that um, that that applies in this instance. Um, there's a suggestion in here that uh, the applicant will be required to remove the debris within sixty days of the project completion. So it's the the demolition of the existing fence. Yeah. Technically, that's yeah. part of it. It'll be within one day. <laughs> You'll have easier to deal with. Um, okay. 
I'll just say as soon as possible. Yeah, that'd, um, that'd indefinitely be. within the time period. Sure. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to tie you into the one day thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. You know, you can see there's debris there right now. It's just because we haven't found someone to take it. We don't have a pickup. Yeah. And we just figured if this ever got approved, we would just do it all at once. But mm -hmm. that debris itself is already pretty dangerous. We don't really want it there. Um. Does anybody else want to say anything? Are you just in speaking? Nope. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I'm Jerry Farland, and I'm his neighbor, and I love the idea. In fact, when they first talked about it, I'm going, yeah, I was really supportive. It gives them a little more privacy in us, because um, we're sitting higher than he is. It's like you can see right, right down into where the kids play and everything. And it kind of gives them a barrier for the kids, you know, so they're in a safe place. So I'm definitely in favor of it. Can I just ask you to spell your name so that sure. I, oh, actually, if you wrote it on there, I can pull I did, it off. Yeah, of it's Farland, okay. F-A-R-L-E-N-D. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Any further questions, concerns, issues, motion? I can make a motion. I love that. Yeah, this is a very efficient meeting. I'll make a motion to grant a privacy fence exception to the usual maximum fence height of Section 3101E, allowing the applicant's request for a 10-foot tall, 80-foot long fence at 28 Spring Hollow Lane, as presented in the application, and supporting and supplemental materials with the debris removed, um, you know, within a reasonable amount of time. As, within 60 yeah, days. 60 days, so. I'll second that motion. Okay. All those in favor? Or Kevin, how do you vote? I vote yes. Rob? Yes. 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 Unanimously passed. Uh, you right oh. oh, my God. I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, oh. Tell me about where to go. Oh. I don't know. They lost. Uh, they're, they're on. I have them on my screen. Okay. Brian? I don't know why it's not showing up there anymore. I'm so sorry. Uh, so uh, Brian, Brian Jones, Jones, here. Let me, I'm going to turn my screen so the chair can see. That's okay. Joe and Hi, Joe. Uh, did you? Um, how did you vote on that? Oh, frozen. He's oh. voting yes. I just I'm reading it from the text. Okay. Uh, Joe is voting yes. Sure. Uh, hold on. I might be able to just turn on my. Oh, you can do personal hold screen. On. Hold on. Hold on. Um, I'm just turning on my personal volume. So, Joe, do you want to say anything? I did get your text, but. Joe? Yeah, did you vote? Can you verbally say yes, maybe again, and try it? He did text you yes. Though. Yeah, he did text me yes, and I was able to read that. Brian, do you want to? Let me go to chat and pop that out. Uh, maybe they can't hear me. So Brian, if you're uh, if you can hear this, if you could uh, either text on the thing or if you can respond verbally, and we can maybe hear you, that would be great. Your application is approved. Um, <laughs> you just drop me an email, Meredith. Yeah. So the the written decision will be the official decision, um, but you've got the verbal okay. So feel free to order your parts. Um, and then, because there's no conditions, when the written decision is ready, also um, issue the zoning permit at the same time, and there'll be another one. There'll be a blue notice card to place. Um, on the property that gives people who might not have shown up tonight um, the 30-day appeal period notification. But yeah, I'll let you know when that's ready to be picked up versus relying on the mail. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, let's... Huh, what happened? So weird. I don't know what happened here. Yeah, we still need to do other oh, approvals. Oh, I know we need to do a meeting. I just don't know if we're waiting for Zoom or not. Yeah, well, that's... Yeah. I'm not seeing... It's just waiting for the host to start the meeting. Uh, this because it's not. It shouldn't be the third meeting. It should be the first meeting. You logged into the wrong one. Yeah, let me double check. Uh, no, no. Yeah, 
February 5th. Ah, that's... That's so weird that that just booted out. Yeah, the Zoom crashes. Oh. That laptop is really old. <laughs> like, really old and outdated. Yeah. Uh, ooh, ooh! <laughs> it, was, it was but, but a week or two ago. Is this one of the recording in progress back in this room? Is the room still getting warmed back up? Oh. Oh. Brian, I, can Brian and Joe, can you guys hear us now? Are you, do you see us again? I can hear you again. Brian? Brian, hi, you're Brian. unmuted. Can you say hi? Yeah, oh yeah. I just missed that. I was, hi guys. I was just, um, just typing. I have just regained sound. <laughs> yeah, we were having some technical difficulties here with our when the central computer in council chambers, which is the oldest computer in this whole room, Time crashes break. out, then I can st I'm still keeping the meeting running, but our sound all goes screwy cuz it all all the microphones and everything feed through there. Um so, so sorry let's, about that. Let's talk about um previous meeting minutes. Um and there are meeting minutes from a 1 to 2024. All right. So the the motion passed then. Yes, the motion passed. The motion okay. passed because right. um, we did get your uh, vote, Joe, in the chat. So um, we, had we had we had enough, and we had enough All here right. him too. So yes, he got his got his approval for his fence. <laughs> Thank All you. Right. Sorry for the hiccup. Thanks, Rob. Well, although we don't have four members present present for the January second uh minutes uh alex was at the last meeting and had no obje objections to the well, minutes and it's also we changed and the rules of procedure it's also yes okay, okay that we approved this without uh four members that were at that meeting present so Adam. i motion to approve the uh january 2nd minutes of the drb second anyone Catherine, you were there we'll second it i wasn't there though Catherine it's, was not there. You don't see any typos. Yes, it's I totally okay. We've got, I enjoyed we learning about the meeting when, Rob, I, when yeah. I read the minutes. Rob, Sharon, and Brian were at yeah. the January 2nd, and Rob, Kevin, and Brian were at the January 16th. So what just happened? That's the sound of this one. That was, yeah, I think I touched the um, mic. Okay, can you? Uh, uh, well, no, but mine somehow freaked out. Well, I'm happy to second if that's helpful. I think that's uh, that's great. Uh, yeah, uh, I hope that both Joe and Brian are still hearing this. Um, we're looking for approval of the January second meeting minutes. Yeah, yeah, you can vote. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. It's anybody can vote. You don't have to have been at the meeting. Yes, so it's a shock change. Okay. Uh, yeah, I All in favor of approving the uh, January second minutes? Aye. Aye. Uh, any objections? Okay. Uh, the same, I uh, was not here for the January 16th, but as we pointed out, that is not necessary. Um, has everyone reviewed those minutes? Yep. Okay. Pulling it up. Uh, no, we have another copy there. I can make a no, motion to it. approve the minutes January 16th. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, so that takes care of the minutes. Um, I love it that we're back in the room again. That is so amazing. Um, I think it'll be easier when there are more participants to be able to see them kind of here yep. instead of offline. Um, the screen attendance gets old. <laughs> Rob is like, I love it. <laughs> no, no, I'm I'm on screen all day. It's great. I just yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah, I, I I do like it quite a bit better. Um, so that's great. Uh, is there any plan to replace the computer in here? So, I, we've got to wait for hopefully by May we'll have consultant reports on the Critical multiple peoples. options, right? Because it's a it's a full review of city hall fire department and police department okay. and factoring in what other city owned places might be able to move people to but it's a it's a big picture reorganization of how we use all those spaces and how to um make downtown ones flood yeah. resilient 
Yeah. Um, which also then goes into how do we spend the money from FEMA and insurance funds? So yes. it's a small piece in the loop. I get you. Yes. The, gotcha. There is a plan to have wherever the meeting rooms end up in having the technology upgraded at that point, I believe. Right. Um, because it, there's a decent chance that this room will not be a meeting room. Right. Um, is my my hope because <laughs> you know i kind of like an office again um so, so yeah okay but, thank you uh I'm still working across the street at the uh police station PD. planning the all of the planning department is in that small community room in the police department yeah the pd the planning department <laughs> that's, right. <laughs> that's right hey we're very secure yeah. uh, now right yeah. Um, so our next meeting is going to be on a Tuesday, February 20th. It actually won't. We have no applications for that day. No. Which, which, what day? The, the, February, the February, second February meeting on, uh, that was going to be on a Tuesday because we've got what is the President's holiday? President's day. day. So we were going to do it on Tuesday, but we have no applications. Yeah. So possibly we'll not see you until yeah. March. So it, unless the board wants to meet on the 20th for some reason other than an application, the next meeting would be Monday, March well, I'll tell you, how did that happen? I was still back at Thanksgiving here. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Well, the 20th is also a Tuesday, right? Yes. Yeah. President's Day is. Right. So I think we go for the uh, yeah. March 4th. Yeah. 4th. Yep. Though I will ask Meredith, are we going to ever, um, I know I'm not able to come to the hearing next week. I know that's, I'll, I'll observe also it's on Valentine's Day. So I wonder if like, it has to be really a diehard person to attend. Um, um, it's yeah. So you're talking about the, the zoning, right? Yeah. I, yeah. Just, so I guess just observing that's next week. I was curious if we're ever going to do like an additional briefing or anything just a, for the board. A briefing would be a welcome. Yep. Yeah, yeah, just to get the highlights, really. Yeah. Okay. Um, I could. Uh, so by the time we meet on March fourth, that will be all done. Yeah. Hopefully. I mean, there's there's two scheduled public hearings, the 14th and the 28th. Um, and if city council can approve the changes on the 28th, then that would be great. If they don't, then they have to wait till after any new city council members get briefed. Mm -hmm. All of that stuff happens. And, you know, continue the public hearing process. Okay. So, um if you wanted a briefing, we would need to meet on the 20th, probably. Oh, I know. I, I um, think to for have our that briefing. Purposes. Or I can do an email yeah. that has, I mean, if that has some of the highlights. Um, uh, I guess I, I, my, my other question is like, yeah, the, you know, it'll be over on the 20th, so the regulations will be updated. Uh, the 28th, hopefully. Okay. And when will they go into effect? Well, so technically, I ha we have to apply them to any applications that come in after that public hearing got warned. So any new applications coming in, I'm reviewing under two regulations and the next staff report you get would be applying both of those and giving so, you the rundown on both. I, I guess I just want, uh, when it's final and it's approved, I want yeah. a full copy of it. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 that's, you will. <laughs> oh, yeah. so you yeah, when, when, when we know it's been, it, that yeah. it's been approved and will be going into effect, We'll be doing full printed copies okay. for everybody who wants them. Um, you can go on our our the zoning regulations page right now mm -hmm. and get the links to the the public hearing notice that gives sort of a brief rundown and see the full text of the draft in red line. Um, a lot of the changes are things that are flowing down from what the legislature passed last session. Mm -hmm. Right, but we're Montpelier is also trying to go further than that. So um, up to four dwelling units would be a permitted use throughout the city. Um, there's a... On any lot, do regardless? Um, yeah, okay. it, regardless of density. Interesting. It would, because um, they're really, as long as it has sewer and water, mm -hmm. city sewer yeah. and water, right? If you're, if you're out in rural and you don't have city sewer and water, you've got to deal with a density issue. Um, the residential, I think it's 24,000 um, zoning district has to go away because of the change to the state house um, with uh, the like minimum lot size issues. So um, 
that will all get moved into a new, what we'll still call res 9,000, but is actually like 8,000, however many square feet, right. minimum lot size. Um, we've also tried to bring some equity into things and in that um, there will be two, like three tiers of dwelling unit rankings for whether it's permitted or conditional uses. And then there'll also be three rankings of congregate living so that small congregate living will be treated the same as one to four dwelling units. Um, so if you have a congregate living situation up to like 3,000 square feet, it's permitted use um, everywhere, same as one to four dwelling units. Um, yes. So that, you know, how the, how the living arrangement is situated, you're not distinguishing so much in right. where it's allowed. Right. Um, whereas right now there are times when, you know, one small congregate living situation might be a conditional use, right. but you can still have up to four dwelling units when it's the permitted. Office thing, right? hmm? The office. Yep. The office thing has been fixed. Um, okay. so that there's the, the personal and professional services definition has been updated. Um, there's also a big revamp of the sign regulations. Um, and a complete overhaul of the demolition provision and dealing with how to deal with historic buildings and oh, demolition. That needs so that massage work. It, it's more than massage. <laughs> it's a it's a big right. that one's a completely new change with different um, avenues for how you deal with a building or a big section of a building that is looking to be demolished. Right. Um, I think those are the highlights. It's it's going to be. It's going to be an interesting, interesting thing. Um, there's also completely getting rid of residential dis density limitations if a building or parcel is within the design review district. This was a recommendation. Can't remember from what organization, um, like a year or two years ago. Yeah. So that if it's in design review, you don't worry about residential density. You still have your limitations on building bulk massing height plus the design review all comes into play for the external. Right. Um, but you don't, you know, we wouldn't control how many units, say, a historic building gets. Yes, we'd have like micro into. units. Or right, you could have right. micro units, lofts, whatever. Right. Um, and we wouldn't worry about how many units are in there. That so room occupancy. Right, well, that, that's a little different. Um, that's, that's a little different. Uh, remember, Mike Miller, Worked in Barry for a long time, <laughs> um, or died. But but what that also, you know, leaves things open to is um, having the market sort of deal with that aspect and the building aspect, right? You still have to comply with your building code. Sure. Good. So yep. it's there's there's a lot of hopefully good stuff that gets passed. Well, you kind of gave us a mini briefing, right? Yeah, I know. That's, I yeah, figured it may as well. Um, I, I knew if we talked with enough, <laughs> we get it out of her. So do do go to the link yeah. that I sent everybody to look at the details um, because I can't I can't talk about everything. But those that really is the highlights of everything that's going to hopefully be changing. What uh, parking has become a uh, not get, not going to have. Parking regulations. Oh uh, no, no, no. We, I, th I think that's still there. I think that's still there. So the the state has adjusted, you know, has mandated that for dwelling units, you don't um, require more than one parking space right. per so, dwelling unit. But that's what Montpelier was already at, and yep. most of our downtown doesn't have that as a requirement. I anyway, know that's, I know that hasn't worked necessarily all that well in larger metropolitan mm -hmm. areas i'm thinking of seattle because yeah. it's town right now um it, it's but i can't imagine it becoming the deal here yeah no so would... so you know the the urban center zoning districts and i think residential 1500 so that's the the tightest residential district um in those currently there there are no parking space minimums right um and so that seems to be working fairly well already. Um, there had been discussion about getting rid of, of parking, minimum parking requirements, but that didn't end up going through. 
um, outside of the downtown. Yeah, yeah, outside of what we already have, yeah. expanding that beyond yeah. the downtown um, and the the highest density residential it, it did not move forward. Now somebody might bring it up at city council, right? Mm-hmm. You, city council is the meat grinder. You, who knows what's going to come out of that? We don't we don't have any control over that. Um, so we're all all interested to see what happens there. Um, but the proposal right now does not change those. And you're getting pushback on the Valentine's Day date or? Oh, well, that was, so that wasn't the plan. Yeah. Originally, the hope was Valentine's would be like the second meeting or something like that. But um, city council just couldn't get to it until yeah. then. And we're really, you know, like I said, if we hit elections, it's going to push everything out even further to get the changes made. Um, so um, we we got stuck with the dates yeah, we had when city council was meeting to try and get something approved before elections. Um, when we've got members that have been here through the whole process and already know what's going on. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah, thanks for the update. Yeah, thanks for that update. You're welcome. It's helpful. <laughs> I'm sorry you're having to analyze things with two potential outcomes right now. It's what well, we have, things, things at the moment are slow. You have no application. Um, for the next meeting. Yeah, you got uh, rents today. So. Right, right. Well, and, and even administrative. App- we get them. Yeah, even administrative applications right now are slow. I think we've hit a little bit of a, a lull as people are adjusting. Um, but you know, I'll I'll take it right now because I'm learning Audra's job more. Um, so you know, I'll, I'll take the slow right now. And, um, you know, things will, there's, there's lots of things percolating, um, that have been percolating for months Maybe and we're just waiting for stuff. Audra has. Audra will be retiring in mid April. Oh, wow. Um, and so we've, we've posted for her replacement. We got authorization to hire for her job, which is really good because with yeah. out her role, mm-hmm. our department would pretty much fall to pieces. <laughs> How long had she been with the... Uh, like 17 years. Okay. So that's um, public service amendment. People are yeah, still... Yes, yes. The, <laughs> the, the application period is open till March 1st. So uh, please take a peek on our website um, and read the job description. Um, yeah, no, and she, uh, I mean, she, you've been here long enough. She stood, she has stood in for zoning administrator position a couple yes. of times yeah. Yeah. when the zoning administrator always, was vacant. She really would step up to the challenge too. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And she has been the prime person on all of our flood hazard permits for at least 10 years, if not longer. Right. Um, so through at least two zoning administrators before me. Um, so she, I mean, she knows so much, <laughs> so I'm trying to, trying to grab all the pieces I haven't learned in the last five years as quickly as I can, um, because there may not be a lot of overlap between her and the new hire. Well, good luck with that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Unless people have any other things to talk about, I would. Um... Motion to adjourn. <laughs> <It's not good. laughs> Second and uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thanks, everybody. We're off the hook for tonight.